it turns out that that symmetry has to do with the conservation of charge. The fact that I can't create a positive or a negative charge anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, right? So physics is, is, is getting really weird and really beautiful at the same time, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. like, oh, this is getting weird. <laughs> when we think of symmetry, we think of something that we're looking at for a static object. If I were to take that photo of the Taj Mahal and then flip it right along the middle, I would get the same exact Taj Mahal. Mm -hmm. So we're used to objects being symmetric, but in the early 1900s, there was talk about maybe there's symmetry in the physical laws themselves. Okay. Okay. There's stuff you can do to physics laws that leave the physics laws exactly the same. Okay. It's quite intuitive at, at the start. Okay. Okay. There's a translation in space. For example, the laws of physics are the same here as uh, they are anywhere else in the universe. If I set up an experiment here in one lab and I do something and I measure something and then I go all the way across the United States and I set up the experiment, I'm going to measure that same thingy, right? What ends up happening is any symmetry is associated with a conservation law. So for example, the fact that I can translate in space leads to a conservation of momentum mm. okay there's also a translation in time if i do an experiment today and then i do it tomorrow and all of the laws of physics are the same that leads to a conservation of energy another one is the rotation in space okay if, okay if i do an experiment here and i rotate my entire experimental apparatus and the laws of physics are the same that leads to the conservation of angular, angular momentum. momentum right it's a deep deep notion that we have, okay? This was in the early 1900s, where Emmy Notzer came up with that. Now, she did that for classical mechanics. And Hermann Weil was one of her colleagues at Göttingen. He thought this was one of the craziest things he's ever heard, right? And he started going further with the new quantum revolution. In okay. quantum mechanics, everything is a wave function, right? Yes. Whatever, whatever, whatever that, that means. means. <laughs> but what, what gets even weirder is that wave function is a complex number. Mm -hmm. Okay, it has a magnitude and it has a phase. It's like a clock hand, right? It's got a length and it's got an angle. Well, according to quantum mechanics, the observables are probabilities of outcomes of experiments. And that comes from taking the magnitude of this complex number, the magnitude meaning only the length. So the, the, the phase actually doesn't matter when it comes to things that we can see, right? Which means if I, if I take an electron, for example, and I change the phase everywhere for that electron, all over the universe, right? If everywhere I'm just like making the clock go a little bit, a little bit, that's not gonna change whatever thing I observe, right? okay? And